has devoted his life to advancing the cause of justice in his generation and beyond. He has received multiple awards and citations for his work in addressing systemic racism, generational poverty, and violence. Michael writes and speaks on subjects near and dear to his heart, including relationships, race and racism, married sex, and Christian doctrine. The life that you see me living, the joy that I have with my children, instead of threatening them on the way to church and cussing them out on the way home and uh, uh, riding to church in terror and, and riding home wondering who's going to get beat and, and, and we can't have fun and we can't do this and shut up, I'm praying, I'll come out there and beat the cute off you and all that other kind of stuff. Well, wh why, why are you not in that bondage? Because you see him in a fuller light, it's giving you a fuller liberty, now the kids are partaking of that fuller love and all of you are together are enjoying this fuller life. What, what do we call this here? This is the the. Zoe, the Zoe life of God, right? Michael works side by side with his wife and bestie of besties, Connie. They currently live in Atlanta with their two children, Olivia and Michael II. Please welcome to the stage, Michael T. Smith. Let me say, they, they don't call it homecoming for nothing, man. I'm telling you, it is a homecoming. Greetings to you. You may be seated this morning. God, thank you so much for your kindness and your love. I, I am um, I'm just blown away, uh, as they say, pleased as punch uh, to be here. And um, I love you, whoever that was. I love you, too. <laughs> uh, I didn't realize how long it had been. Uh, it's been a minute. I'm going I'm to tell you how long it's been, okay? Let me just tell you how long it's been real quick. Uh, come here, Mikey. <laughs> this is how long it's been. <laughs> so, 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 so when I met Pastor Donald and Pastor Taffy, I was about three months younger than him. Come here, Olivia. This is my baby girl. <laughs> um, the, 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 my first message I ever preached here, I was about three years, three months younger than her. That was 31 years ago. 31 years ago. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. I, I, was, I was going through looking for some paperwork, Rich. I found this. The, this is a, I don't even know if you know what this is. So a long time ago. <laughs> that's right, that's the minute. Yeah, so uh, let me see. If you're under 25, so it used to be that, uh, no, this is a cassette. <laughs> now, you got your glasses on, all right, good. This is, so do I. The word works. And renewing the mind, the key to unlocking victory, ministers Reginald Ezel and Michael Smith, April 24th, 1992. Wow. <laughs> 1992, man. Uh, it was a Friday morning. I walked in, I was working at McDonald's, I told my boss, I said, they've added morning services at my church. Uh, I was 18 years old. Uh, they added morning service at my church. I, I, I work 5 a.m. to 1 p.m. I got to go. They said, you can't leave here for church. I, I said, if you want me. Uh, I was like Joseph. I said, well, then I just won't work here. They said, no, 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 please don't leave. Please don't leave, you know. Uh, um, so I went and pastor was getting his hair cut. Glorious, I think. Uh, I think was cutting his hair. And he was sitting in the chair, and, uh, and, and uh, uh, it's 10.15. The service starts at 10. Music's going. I walk in. He says, hey, Mike. He said, you got your guns loaded? I said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, that's preacher speak for, are you ready if it's time? <laughs> I said, oh, yeah. He said, good, because you're preaching this morning. I said, that's funny. He said, no, like in 12 minutes. <laughs> And I went out and preached a Friday morning, 10 o'clock, 31 years and three months ago. And, and, and went out, and I, I didn't even have my Bible. I, I, was, I, I had on my maintenance uniform, because uh, I was a maintenance technician at McDonald's. I mean, that's a fancy title for cleaning up vomit. It is. <laughs> I'm saying, you know. Uh, but I had my maintenance uniform on. I, I changed into a suit that I had from a thrift store. 
Uh, my mother, I think, got it from a garage sale. It was a custom suit for some other dude, right? I mean, it, had, <laughs> it, it said custom made for a name I didn't know. So I walked in, and, but I had forgotten my Bible. Come straight from work, forgot my Bible and ran to the usher's station in the back and grabbed the Bible and got up and said, now let's open our Bibles to Mark 10. The whole New Testament was missing from the Bible I had stolen. <laughs> but this, this man and this woman, they saw something in this little kid. They could see what no one else could see. Well, Except maybe my mom and my mom and dad saw it, but your mom and dad always think you're great, right? You know what I mean? My kids, I love them. They could be idiots. I don't know. I love them, but I don't know. <laughs> I'll never see it, right? That's how a parent is, right? You go to a play and there's, you know, a hundred kids on stage. Is there really a hundred kids? No. There's one kid up there and a lot of other kids that don't know what they're doing. Let's just be honest, right? I mean, you know, just... 31 years ago, a Friday morning. Let's open our Bibles to John, the first chapter. <clears throat> Father, I thank you for this privilege to stand before these your precious sheep, these your precious, to stand in this place. God, you've met me here. <laughs> God, you've been meeting me here on Friday mornings for three decades. I yield myself to you. Speak through me, think through me. Not my mind, but yours. Not my utterance, but yours. And God, I thank you that hearts, ears and hearts are anointed to hear and receive. I give you praise for what will come forth. Uh, Satan, you have no liberty in this session today. No distraction or confusion. Nothing will hinder the flow of the love of God as it comes forth in this service today. Your peace on everyone gathering. In Jesus' name. And all that think those words should happen right now say, Amen. Amen. John, the first chapter um, is where we're going to start today. <clears throat> and. Uh, I was in the back um, just doing makeup and everything, and I, and I ran into uh, Apostle Bank, and he said, he said, well, he said, I'm coming this morning to hear you speak and get a year's worth of messages in one morning. <laughs> he said, I know I'm going to hear a year's worth of teaching in one morning, and I, and I want you to prepare yourself because I'm going to give you about 150 years in the next 55 minutes. <clears throat> I, don't, <laughs> I thought about this too. Don't be scared. <laughs> Somebody said, well, what are you going to say? I'm going to say some things that you may have not ever heard before, but I promise you I won't tell you anything that you don't already know to be true. Somebody said, well, if I never heard it, how do I know it to be true? There's a knowing. There's a knowing in your knower that was put there before the foundation of the world, made in the likeness and image of God. Romans says all that can be known of God is already deposited on the inside of you. So it may never have entered into your ears, but it's going to ring so deep down inside, you're going to say, I never heard it, but I always knew. That's exactly the way it was. <clears throat> John uh, chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning was the Word. Not the Bible. <laughs> in, the be <laughs> in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by the Word. All things were made by God. All things were made by the Word. And without God, without the Word, was not anything made that was made. And in God, in the Word, was life, and the life was the light of men. And that light shined into darkness, and the darkness could not contain it. Drop on down to verse 14. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we saw His glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father. And when we looked at the Word, we, we remarked. When we saw the Word become human, we remarked, why? Oh, it's full of grace and truth. <clears throat> In, in, uh, in Second Temple Israel, right, which is, which is where this is, um, they, they stand, so, so Israel believed in this idea of oneness, right? Um, that there's one God, 
There's only one people of God. There's only one nation of God. There's only one family of God. There's only one law of God. There's only one temple of God. <clears throat> and they're convinced that they are the people. And they stand on a cliff, on the edge of a cliff that Genesis through Malachi defined for them where the sidewalk in. The, the road down the, uh, of truth, it ends at Malachi. And they stand on a cliff, and the only thing they're waiting for now is the Messiah, right? They're waiting. And, and every time I draw Jesus, I don't draw uh, blonde hair, blue eyed Jesus, I draw dreadlock Rasta Jesus, right? That's my. <laughs> <clears throat> um, <clears throat> well, they don't know it's Jesus, right? They don't, they, don't, they don't know it's him, but they're standing there and they're waiting. And they, they know there's, there's, there's no, no, no other clarity about God. There's nothing else left to know. It's all contained in Genesis. It's all contained in the law. It's all contained in the prophets. And, 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 and the, the, all that can be written has been written. All that can be known is known. All that will be said has been said. We have reached the end of the sidewalk. There is nothing else left. The only thing left is for God to show up and set up rulership for the one people, the one God, in the one temple, in the one land, in the one nation, and to rule from there, and everybody else better get ready, because when he shows up, say hello to my little friend. I mean, it is, I mean, we are, you know, do you want to play rough? I mean, it, it is happening right now. And it's a tense time. The first temple has been destroyed. The second temple is rebuilt. This is it. We're, we're, we're here. We're, we're waiting. And there are people, there are guardians, right? That's an old school marker. <laughs> if I use this too much, and, you know, uh, I might see the Virgin Mary over here and, and Tupac over here, but I, you know, I. I <laughs> So I'm going to say, was it a vision? No, it's just whatever's in this. I don't know. Um, and there are guardians. They're called the Pharisees. They're not bad people. They're there to protect. Protect the people. Protect the law. Protect the, 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 the land. Protect the temple. Why? They can't risk the people getting uh, out of alignment. Not when we're so close. And people had heard it preach, Messiah is coming, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. And they are on edge. And they're so on edge that they're, they're, they're freaked out that, that, that I I anyone at any time could be the one. Which is good that they're in expectation, but it's also bad because it means a lot of them are popping up. <laughs> you know, sometimes when you have such high expectation, I was thinking about, <laughs> golly, I'm getting in trouble already. I was thinking about, uh, um, ugh, I better not say that. Uh, <laughs> if you think about America's two party system, right? One, one group of reliable voters is the most exploited group of voters in recent history. The other group is the most exploitable. Let me just chew on that for a minute. Someone say, which one is which? Well, I'll let you figure out which one is which. <laughs> but in an atmosphere of expectation like that, I remember one time I had been, um, and this is, this is back, you know, you think about how much, so you preached on a Wednesday, the word works, Wednesday morning. I showed up that Friday and preached Renewing the Mind. Pastor Dollar heard my sermon. He goes, Red, you were so good on Wednesday. Mike, you were so good today. Y'all get together and preach it together Friday night. So we, everybody left the chapel. He and I joined hands. Lord, whatever you want to do, do it. And he got up and preached 45 minutes. I preached 45 minutes. And pastor preached 45 minutes. Man, it was a time. But you know what? 
if you were to pick up that tape and hear, you'd be like, what is this? What, what were y'all thinking back then? <laughs> Why? Well, we've moved a lot in that time. That's only 31 years. So uh, this is in the early 90s where um, back when, when uh, in, in our Christian thinking, the devil was everywhere. I mean, the devil was in everything. The devil was in Harry Potter. The devil was in anything Procter and Gamble. Harry Potter wasn't even around. But I had an Aladdin. I had an Aladdin T-shirt because I like the movie Aladdin. They said on TBN, uh, the devil's probably in your house, and he probably came through something that has to do with magic. Next thing I know, my Aladdin T-shirt's in the trash. I'm like, Mom, what are you doing? We're getting the devil out of this house. <laughs> So just to give you the setting, right? So, so I mean, I'm hearing stories of, of uh, Lester Summerall and, 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 and the devil sitting down on his bed in the middle of the night, and he wakes up, and he sees the devil there, and he goes, oh, it's just you, devil, and I'm going back to sleep. Or, or Norval Hayes out in the, out in the woods, and, 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 and uh, uh, the, the spirit shows up, and he doesn't know if it's God or if it's the devil. So, he ta- so I mean, I'm, I'm saturated in that. And Robert's Laird, and I mean, the devil, Benny Hinn. And, but, I mean, I remember there were intercessors. Pastor called a meeting one time. We had intercessors here. Just, you might remember this. Uh, I don't, my, 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 you guys might have been tampered at the time, but, but uh, uh, the intercessors, they stopped the middle of the prayer because the VCR in the intercessory room clicked on, and they all said, I mean, the, the devil came inside that thing. Right there. <laughs> so it was in the middle of this. I'm, I'm young. I mean, I'm seven. I'm just like my kids here, you know, right? So I'm going to bed, and I'm praying, and I'm going, Satan, you're not going to harass me in my sleep, and I dare you to sit on my bed, like, in the middle of the night. I'll catch up. You go to sleep. Man, I clicked off my light. My room is complete dark, and, and you can't see here, but th- th- there's these clocks that are telling me how long I have left, and you know the old digital clocks, completely, but it's got those red numbers right there. <laughs> I laid down in my bed and said, oh, watch over me tonight, and Satan, you. Now, and that clock on my nightstand slid across at me in the darkness. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I jumped up. I bind you, Satan. I mean, I mean, lights down, and my sisters are sleeping. They start screaming. I mean, I'm binding Satan. You get out of here. And I, I'm binding Satan while I'm backing up and clicking on the light, right? <laughs> so, so I wish this wasn't a true story, but you know what it was? When I turned on the light, I realized my pillow had fallen off my bed <laughs> and had hit the alarm cord. The alarm, and, and when it hit the cord, it slid the thing over. <laughs> but you know what? <laughs> when, you're, when, you're, when your spirit is wide open. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what does C.S. Lewis say? Two different groups of people. Those who pay too little attention to the devil and those who pay way too much. Amen. So there's so much expectation that people are popping up and saying, I'm who you've been waiting on. John the Baptist pops up and it says, they all wondered, could he be the one? And he said, no, 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 I'm not the one and I'm not claiming to be the one, but the one is coming. And so now he shows up and the Pharisees aren't evil. They're not bad. Why? Because if Israel gets deceived and falls in deception and starts following something that doesn't line up with Genesis through Malachi, they run the risk of God saying, you know what, I thought you were ready, but you're not. You're going back to Babylon, take another lap. The Assyrians are going to come up, take another lap, because that's what they thought. They thought in their brain that when, 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 uh, when, <laughs> when we had a good harvest, we must, be, we must be fulfilling Genesis through Malachi. When we don't have a good harvest, man, what are we doing wrong? When the enemies leave us alone, we must be fulfilling Genesis through Malachi. When the Assyrians roll through, when the Babylonians roll through, right? When, 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 when the Egyptians roll through, oh, man, we must have done something wrong. They interpreted everything through the lens of if we're Genesis through Malachi, then it's good, and if it's not. So the Pharisees are like, we love God. We look at the Word all the time. We take it seriously, and we will not afford, even if it means we have to shed blood to keep our nation from being deceived, we will do so out of loyalty to God. (laughs) And in the beginning, God, not not a guy, not an old guy sitting on the throne. God's not, 
God's not a person. God's not a man. God's not, God's not, doesn't have, that's not, that's not, that's not God's a man. I mean, you don't, you don't think you see on the throne and up under his robe, he's got, you know, parts. You don't think, I mean, we, we, well, that's how I was always taught. Well, there's a lot of things we've been taught. But what is God? <laughs> the, the mind, right? The source, the order the origin of all that is. Uh, the, 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 the sans cosmic, if there never was a beginning. The trans cosmic, if it's a universe, a multiverse, an omniverse, the, all that is, not before all that is, even without an idea of before. The mind, source, order. Well, so, well, break it down for me. I'll tell you this way. In the beginning, Love created the heavens and the earth. And people now in Second Temple Israel, that's, why, that's how people all over the world that never heard of Moses, never heard of Jesus, never, that's how they can know God. How can you possibly know God? If you know love. That's how you can go to a place where they never heard of Jesus, they never heard of uh, 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 never heard anything, and you can walk in and, and you can be totally surrounded by love and kindness and service and all that. Remember when Paul was shipwrecked on the island? And shipwrecked and they all went to shore, and it says, and the barbarous people came out of their hut. Said, y'all need some help? Get on in here. Well, come in here. We'll get you food. Get these guys some more. Get the, and they, they couldn't even speak the language, but they brought them blankets, and they brought them this, and they, they, they made them a fire, and they got them some food, and they got them some, and they, well, here, let me help you. And they, they gave them stuff to get back on their journey. So, well, who, you, you, you never read Leviticus. You, 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 you never read Matthew. So how, how do you possibly know how to treat another human being? The same way long before there was a Bible, Joseph said, I can't sleep with his wife. That's not my wife. Well, where would you get that from? I'm telling you, there's stuff you never heard that's deep down inside every human being that we already know to be true. I was at Union City at the, uh, what was that mall over at Union City? Uh, Shannon. I was looking at a watch, and I was looking at a watch, and there was this nice young man, and my mom and I were looking at it. She said, well, I think I might want to get you something for your birthday. So we were looking at it. So I like this one. I like that one. She said, well, we'll just see. And there was a nice young man, a nice uh, black guy helping us out, and so sweet and so nice. Yes, ma'am, and this and that, and this and that, yes, ma'am. And my mom, we, we, we got ready to leave, and he said, well, here's a card, and hold on to this, and this is this serial number. If you come back, and we'll just work it out. And my mom grabbed his hand. She said, thank you, so, young man. You've been so nice. She said, I don't, know, I don't mean to offend you. She said, but we're Christians, and, and, and uh, uh, I, I don't know. You just, seem like, you just seem like you've been around the Word. You seem like you've, you've been around Jesus. You just have the fruit coming out of you. He said, oh, man, you're very kind. He says, I'm a Muslim. He says, I'm, I'm part of the nation of Islam. He said, but that's very kind of you to say. He says, we always purpose to treat everybody with kindness. And what's happening? A lived experience running contradictory to the conditioning of it's just us and nobody else. So into this thing of expecting the Messiah and everybody on guard that we might get a false Messiah, guess what? It says, and the Word became flesh. Or as I like to say it, love took on human form. Love took on human form. And it says that when they finally saw God, God was not at all like Genesis through Malachi told them God would be. God did not act at all like they said. As a matter of fact, they kept holding up Genesis to Malachi to God and saying, here's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> and what do we see in verse 17? If we have it, maybe on the screen. Verse 17, John 1, maybe? Verse 18? I'm new. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> this is what the testimony is. No man had seen God at any time. Well, 
Abraham, no man had seen. But Moses, no man had seen. But you know David, no man had seen. But Isaiah, no. But you know Jer no one had seen God at any time. But when Jesus enters the earth for the very first time, it says, it says in the Amplified Bible, it said, no one had seen God at any time, but Jesus brought him out <laughs> to where he could be seen for the very first time. And oh man, <laughs> let the gains begin. Why? Because the guardians of the galaxy, they believed that Genesis through Malachi told you everything you need to know. <laughs> and Jesus told him, he says, you guys don't know. <laughs> you keep throwing that book at me and you don't understand it or anything about God. You haven't the slightest clue. And he knew he couldn't argue Scripture to Scripture with him. Because to people who, who, to people who are connected to God, they go into the Scriptures and see past that which cast a shadow over God. But to people that don't know God, they take the scriptures and hold it up and project that shadow onto God. Which is why the use of the scriptures, as Pastor Dick, I was saying last night, it's only as useful as it points us to the person of Christ. And if what we're reading and pulling out and creating doctrine takes us away from what we know to be true about the person of Christ, we are misreading the map. Jesus walks in. There's a woman who's sick. He says, oh, come here, sweetheart. And, and, and the guardians are over on the side of the room watching. <coughs> <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. of Nazareth. Um, not, not today. It's, uh, it's the Sabbath. And Jesus is not going to sit there and argue with him. Well, now, I understand that, but I mean, you go through that. I mean, you ever meet somebody locked in that, 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 uh, that is... <laughs> that their religious knowing has gummed up their, in, their religious knowledge has gummed up their intuitive knowing. That's what false religion does, right? False religion has a man write this. I've been inspired. God created all people equal and all are endowed with inalienable rights that can't take away of life and liberty and pursuit. My pen's messed up. Hey, boy. Get over in there and give me some more ink. Anyway, thank you. That it's self-evident. Listen to me. Listen to me. When you have a wrong concept of God, you can miss something self-evident. We well, word self-evident means it means it needs no explanation. It means no further articulation. It just it's a brute fact. You just know it. And the man writes down something that cannot be disputed, cannot be argued with, but it's something he cannot conceive personally. These are the Pharisees. And Jesus tried going back with them. Well, yeah, okay, well, okay, maybe I shouldn't heal, but you know, you, you know, you remember David now, he did something that wasn't really in line with Moses, and, and that didn't work. You go scripture with scripture to somebody, they're going to come back with another scripture. I mean, it's like, it's like that old game where, like, hand on top, you know, I mean, you can go all, oh, 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 and that's, that's what Pastor was trying to say. I mean, this, if, if you've heard, if you've heard these first sessions, What's been coming for this? We got to stop all. Yeah, but what about but what about and over in John? But what about in Second Timothy? What, that, 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 this goes nowhere. 
But if we're going to argue and debate verse by verse and Greek to Greek, and oh, well, I assign a little more weight to this, and, and this is my point, well, this is my counterpoint, well, my counterpoint is your lead point, you will go nowhere. But if you say, all right, let's just take the point and see if we can line it up with the person of Christ, that's going to solve a lot of the problems. So Jesus finally, <laughs> I don't know if he finally realizes, that's, that's probably not a right word to say it. Uh, he says, okay, uh, man, I'm not going to go round and round with you on this. Um, I told Pastor Dick after last night, I said, thank you for just always pushing the envelope towards love even if what's in your head, you already know the contradictions that everybody's going to say, yeah, but what about this verse? And yeah, but what about that verse? I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm pushing toward the person of grace. And the person of grace offers, remember, nobody had ever seen God at any time, but the person of Christ reveals the Father. So, he, he, Jesus says, oh, sweetheart, how long has it been? Oh, my gosh, you've been burdened so long. Well, come here. And they said, uh, <coughs> not today. And Jesus says, I can't argue the Scriptures with you. Because the Scriptures that, sh you know, <laughs> you ever seen blinds, like, um, you know, uh, vertical blinds, uh, uh, not vertical blinds, but like, you know, or I guess vertical blinds or, or, or the, the or horizontal blinds, I don't know what you call them. You know, uh, you, 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 depending on how they're tilted, depending on what you see. If you go through the Bible and everything is tilted towards, uh, towards, the false, um, towards the false supposition that Moses had full clarity, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. If you go through the Scriptures with a different thing, that Christ provides the only true light, you're going to see the Bible a completely different way. Jesus, I'm not going to go back and forth with you. He said, I'll ask you this. He said, if your dog was in trouble on a Saturday, <laughs> what would you do? You talk about Fluffy. If, if, <laughs> if Fluffy was cornered by some coyotes and they were after her and, and she got caught up in the bramble bush, oh, I'd be out there in a quick second. I'd be snatching that thing and I, I'd be shooting. You'd be coyote. I mean, I'd be, I'd be, you're talking about for Fluffy? And he goes, isn't it interesting? He says, you know intuitively what to do here, but your false knowledge of the Scriptures blocks you from action. <laughs> he, said, he, said, he, he said, you're so concerned about being vertically right that it has paralyzed you from acting horizontally toward exactly what you should do. And that, if anything else, you want to get out of the ministry of Jesus, if anything else you're supposed to take away, he's trying to tell you that, that true religion has nothing to do with vertical alignment. That the only expression of true religion, the only expression of God religion, the only expression of Christ-aligned religion is what you do to other human beings. And everywhere Jesus went, he did not say in Matthew 7 that uh, to love the Lord your God and, and to love your neighbor is, is the summary of the law and the prophets. That's not what he said. <laughs> he said, for all the law is summarized by seeing your fellow neighbor, feeling inside, what if that was me, and acting accordingly. Amen. And he knew he couldn't argue the Scripture because the Scriptures that if you approach the Scriptures with a God-open heart, they reveal. But if you approach the Scriptures with a fearful, wrong idea of God, they pervert. And so Jesus would say to them, he would say, well, you're a parent. You know what to do with your children. I mean, if your children, why, why are you asking me about, I'm here to argue the Scripture. He's, I'm trying to argue with what you know intuitively. I'm trying to spike in you what you know in your deepest knowing because what you know in your deepest knowing will serve you better as I reveal who the Father is than what you've been conditioned to believe about God that really has nothing to do with God at all. And everywhere he goes, he's con what? It's always the written word and the living word clashing and clashing 
and clashing and clashing. But Moses said, but Moses said, he said, I know what you heard, but I said, I know what you read, but I barely, he said, I keep, you keep pushing at me. What was written through a glass darkly through people who were feeling, and they, well, Moses, and he said, and I, I understand what Moses said, but no man has seen God at any time, but I am here. Yeah, yeah. And the book says, don't let that woman who has bled and has not stopped bleeding touch you because she's unclean and shouldn't be here and anything she touches is unclean and shouldn't be here and when she touches anything it's disqualified and you just let her touch you don't you know what they said he said God. he said everything they saw they saw through a shadow I'm out here shadow free. You're seeing it as real as you can get. And they didn't catch it. What do you say? Philip said, man, look, before you get out of here, just, just show us the Father before you go, please. <laughs> man, have you not been paying attention when you have seen me? You have seen the Father? And this should be corrective. We should have come out of this thinking differently about the Old Testament. We should have come out of this questioning our understanding of God based on how God is portrayed. But that's not the form of religion we inherited. We inherited a form of religion where they said, Genesis to Malachi stands on equal footing with the person of Christ. Hmm. And I'll have you know, the living word is always higher than the written word. So they, one day they enter a village. They're in this nice posh hotel. Jesus comes in. He's telling some joke that was probably on the edge. Right? Let's just be honest. It's a little on the edge. But he's telling them, you know, he's like, well, I'll just have a Diet Coke. And the disciples bust up laughing. And, and uh, he comes in, and there's a kerfuffle in the lobby. And over at the desk, James and John are arguing. What did you say? What did you say? What do you mean you won't serve us? What do you, I mean, and there's a thing going on right in the middle of the, the Ritz, Carlton, Samaria. I mean, it's happening right there. <laughs> and, and, and they come over, and Jesus is like, what, what's, what's the problem? They're not going to let us stay here. Why? Because they said we got, we're heading toward Jerusalem, and they don't want to let us crash here. Jesus says, that's no problem. Let's go. James says, no, 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 it is a problem. So I was like, yeah, it is a problem. Uh, my dad, we work with my dad. He, he, he used to sell fish up here. They, they treated us like garbage. We used to come up in this neighborhood when we were little kids, and we'd try to sell fish, and they would always bid us down because they knew we were struggling. And they, I mean, you should have seen the way. They would, they would look at us, little kids, and the little kids would mock us. And I used to watch my brother, John said, I used to watch my brother get beat up. And I couldn't help him. Man, you don't, know, you don't know what these people have done to us. This does matter. They've been, they've been getting away with this their whole life. And Jesus looks at him and says, man. And he used profanity, right? He's like, he's like, they're like, do you have any idea how that feels? And Jesus says, it probably bleeping hurt. He goes, I get it. it it's, it's awful. I can't believe they did that. That's wrong on every way it could be wrong. But, my, but we're not going to stand in this lobby and become them. Hmm. That's right. That's right. And what did they say? No, 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 no. Now it's not the time for love. <laughs> what did they say? We want you <clears throat> to do this right here. In in God's word, undisputed in God's word, call down fire from heaven and Stop. destroy them. Uh, chapter and verse, uh, you can't deny it. It's in the word. I stand on it in the name of Jesus. And what does Jesus? What does Jesus say to them? What does he say? My guys, my brothers in Christ, <laughs> you don't even know what spirit you're of. What? How can I not know about the true mind of God? It's written right here. My brother. My brother. And Jesus, all of a sudden, he realizes, I've not done a good job with this. And right there in the middle of the lobby, Jesus goes, wait, 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 wait. You think that's me? 
We've been hanging out all this time, and you think the way I would respond. These are parents in here. That lady over there that told you no, she only did it because of the manager. That's somebody's daughter who just graduated from college. She's the, she's the first one to go to college in that whole family. And you think that because your feelings are hurt, I'm your little bewitched genie that I'm going to bring down. You think, oh, no, no, no. Please don't tell me you picked that up when we've been hanging out. No, oh, man, we got it out of the scripture. No, 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 no. no okay, um, oh, wait a minute. You don't think I'm a baby killer, do you? You, you think I would kill a, a woman's child? No, Jesus, we don't take a, okay, but you keep throwing this word at me. And it says in the word that God was displeased with David and murdered his child. You think that's who I am? Well, n no, n not you, but you're like, you're like the happy side of God. And, and then there's a... <laughs> There, there, there's like, there's the other part of God. It's like, you know, like the God on Fred Flintstone's shoulder. There was like the one really, oh, love everybody. And then there's the, oh, kill them all. And you're more like, you're more like the love everybody God. But we know the real nature of God. No, 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 no. Stop all this real nature of God. Jesus, don't hit me with that real nature of God crap. If you've seen me, Come on. do not make an assumption about God that you cannot draw a direct line to what you have seen in me. I am the incarnation of the Father. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Well, that, but that, you're going to ask us to, you tell us that, Jesus. You're already telling us that it's not eye for an eye. You're already telling us it's not tooth for a tooth. You're already telling us not to throw our old lady, our 36-year-old wife out and trade her in for two 18-year-olds. Next thing you're going to tell us, God didn't firebomb all the gays and kill them. I mean, Jesus, we, look, we believe you're a good part of God, but you're just, <laughs> we don't believe you're actually showing us who God is. He said, all right, wait, hold up, cousin, hold up, wait, wait. This is in the lobby. This is happening in the lobby. He said, Philip, 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 Philip. When they brought me that lady who had been caught in adultery, right, and they hit me with that book, which you know how much I hate it when they throw that crap at me, but they hit me with that book and said, the book says she got to be killed. Yeah. What did I do? Did I argue the scriptures with them? No. Did I go back and forth on the original language? No. What would you do? You asked them to look inside themselves and see that if that was the, really the way God operated, you ask them to look inside themselves and see what would that mean God's attitude was towards them. And as soon as they realized that the way they'd been conditioned to treat people really had nothing to do with the way God actually treated them, they put their rocks down and they walked out the door. Why do you think I did that? Do you think I did that to be in contradiction with the Father? No, I did that as a clarification of the Father. Well, well, this woman's unclean. The book says she can't touch you. She can touch me. This one over here is a Samaritan. She can come near me. This one over here is evil and a sinner. That's where I'm going to dinner. This one over here is a corrupt power abuser. Power. That's where I'm heading out. But if you're around these people, don't you have to destroy all these sinners? That's your perverted idea of God. I'm showing you how God really walks up to sinners, how God really wraps his arm around the hurting, how God really touches the untouchable. You have a shadowed idea of God, and I am bringing God out into the light to where God can be seen. <laughs> well, <clears throat> as I'm sure you can imagine, the Pharisees thought that was great. <laughs> we have it wrong. <laughs> We're just going to change. Rather than stretch their idea of God, they chose to kill God instead. Rather than accept God may be bigger than I've been taught to believe, God may be gooder than 
I've been taught to believe. Well, this can't be the Messiah. Why? Because the Messiah is going to come and pour out wrath on everybody. And this guy's claiming he's one with the Father, and all he's doing is loving and forgiving everybody. You should see him. He's ridiculous. And this is their private meetings, right? Their private meetings. There's no way. Did you see the other day? He's just walking around and people going, uh, your sins are forgiven. Uh, your sins are forgiven. Uh, your sins are forgiven. And they're like, yeah, excuse me, uh, you could better burn up an animal somewhere. You can't just forgive sins. Something got to die. Right? If, if there's no death, Moses told us if there's no death, there can't be forgiveness. Who are you to just start sprinkling out forgiveness on everybody? I hope you're keeping a tab of how many cats you got to burn up. Well, no, Jesus, Jesus was doing it on credit. He was going to burn himself up and that was going to replace all the cats. But then he says, what's the big deal if I freely forgive this one or freely feel this one. I'm trying to show you, you're not dealing with a transactional God. You're dealing with love in human form, and God is just pouring out love on every place that he goes, and every place that he goes, and that was supposed to change us, and we were supposed to go out and not preach, uh, if you do this, then God will, and if you don't, then God won't, and you better not, or God will get you. We were supposed to preach what we saw, that love goes everywhere, and heals all, and helps all, and loves all, and serves all. That's what, But we didn't take that away. We walked out and said, are you in our group? So Jesus says, look guys, I know you're hurt, I know you're hurt, I know you're hurt, and there's a part of me, because I'm human, that I want to go take these guys in here, and I want to take them back into a barn, and we're going to take that little manager back there with a toenail, toenail clipper, we're going to take a place, by, but you know what, that's the small self, that's the us that's been conditioned in this world, but that's not our image created, our image seated self, that's our small self, our chaotic self, where we are born in a world with chaos, inherited chaos, like Pastor Dick said last night, we passed on chaos, but that's not who we are in our highest self, in our highest self, we are made in the likeness and image of love. And I'm not going to go to my small self. I'm going to go to my high self. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to pick up these bags. Uh, uh, <laughs> Peter, you're going to pick up those brochures and put them back on the rack. And Judas, you're going to take some money out and you're going to tip every valet in here and you're going to go up there and put a 20 on her desk because she didn't deserve all this drama. And we're going to go find another hotel. Yes, Judas, you are going to take the money out and tip the people and put it up there. I don't want here. And it better be good. Bartholomew, make sure he gives a generous tip. Let's get the bag. Listen, I tell you. And Jesus like, I'm telling you, he's like, Judas, this guy and his money is going to be the death of me someday, I swear. And he's going on. And, and they walk on out the door, and Jesus holds the door, and he lets everybody go out the door. And we were supposed to see that and go, wow, let's think differently about God. But we don't get that. We get our biggest preachers on television seeing an earthquake in, in San Francisco and say, that's just God getting all the gays back. And we still have a false, shadow, corrupted idea of God. Instead of letting Jesus show us who the Father is and funneling everything through him, we're still letting the written word try to tell us what we know is not true about God. So, <laughs> two things. And when somebody tells you that, well, in Thailand, they, God sent the tsunami. He can only tolerate so much sin. And you know when they say that? They can back that up with Scripture. Mm. But they can't back it up with Jesus. That's why pastor's not been preaching a doctrine of grace. He's been preaching the person. Jesus, think of Jesus like a prism. And every time they took the written word and poured it into, poured what they thought they knew into the person of Christ, it didn't come out the other side looking like they thought it was supposed to look. But two problems. Number one, Jesus, <laughs> so they kill him. And you know Jesus, you know how he is. Oh, <laughs> there are a lot of people going, oh yeah, now you've done it. You pushed him, and you pushed him, and now you've done it. And Jesus gets on the cross and looks at all the powers of the religio-political world, motivated by the dark powers. <clears throat> First time we went to New York, Went to the Jacob Javits Convention Center. We had gone to Long Island, 
But this was like New York, New York. We, pastor didn't know. We didn't know who would show up. <laughs> so he got a room, you know. He thought, well, this is good. 5.30. Meeting doesn't start till 7. 5.30. It's packed out. No room. No room. It's lying out the door. I have to sneak in trying to get... I'm, 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 you know, part of the team, you know. I got to sneak in past. The fire marshals and the ushers are holding the door. And I was like, I had the badge. I'm on the team. I'm on the team. They opened it. Let me in. And when they opened it, people were pulling the door to try to sneak in. The fire marshal going, no, 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 no. I mean, it was crazy. So pastor got there. He's like, are all those people trying to get in? Like, why? He goes, why haven't they opened the doors? We said, sir, the doors are open. <laughs> <laughs> the church is steeple. <laughs> it's full of people. <laughs> And he goes, what? He goes, There's a, we're full? Full to capacity. And, 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 and I was like, it's awesome. I, I said, I bet there's 3,000 people that can't get in. He's like, that's not awesome. I'm like, yeah, it's awesome. What do you, I mean, the first time in New York, we had to turn people away. He goes, that's terrible. He goes, uh, he says, he, he says uh, I need to go talk to him. And I had just been out there. And I'm going to tell you, there was a bunch of Bibles and a bunch of this and a bunch of... <laughs> Hey man, what the? No, do a blanket. I mean, there's a lot going on out there. So pastor, pastor put his Bible down. He put his thing. He signed to go talk to him. I said, I don't know if I'd go out there and talk to him. It's kind of crazy. And he go. And I mean, he looked at me. He goes, Oh, I know you wouldn't go out and talk to him. But I'm gonna go out and talk. I felt like Peter. I was like, You'd have to call me Satan, man. You could have just said. You could have just said I disagree. You know, you'd have to. You know. Man, they were all screaming at us. He opened the door, and the fire marshal was the security standing in front of him. And, and, and it, was like, it was like when the Pope showed up in New York. Everybody was rioting, whatever, and they just got all calm. That's right. He's like, hey, wow, we didn't know you loved us like this. We're so sorry. We did it. I'll tell you what we're going to do. I'm going to go in here and preach, and we're going to start at 7, and, and uh, we're going to do a quick praise, a quick this. We'll be done at, uh, no, I think we're going to start at like 6.30. We'll be done at 8 o'clock, and then we're going to have a second session, and we're going to just do that 2 tonight, 2 tomorrow morning, 2 tomorrow night, 2 the next morning, 2 tomorrow night, and the whole crowd was like, ah! But I'm back here thinking, you mean I got to vacuum twice? I got to clean up twice? I'm not, I'm not a good guy. I'm telling you right now, I'm not a good guy. I just play a good guy on TV. I'm not a good guy. <laughs> so they're looking at Jesus on the cross, and they have a false expectation. Y'all done done it now. <laughs> he pushed and pushed and pushed. What is this? Blank around and find out? Y'all get ready to find out. <laughs> and what does Jesus do? The only thing you ever need to know. Everything these people are doing, they do out of just a wrong understanding of everything about everything. These guys over here are doing it because they're trying to be loyal to God. These guys over here are worried that I'm going to uh, like pull people. <laughs> just, they don't know what they're doing. Just, everybody, you're forgiven. So now he's dead. <laughs> and and two, two issues. So a couple of people believed he came back to life. And they went to Jerusalem to the temple, and they set up tents. And they're like, he's coming back, and we ain't leaving. And Peter James like, yeah, we ain't leaving. They said, well, we'll beat you. Beat us. We'll put you in jail. Put us in jail. We'll just bust right out. He's going to be back any second. And we're not going nowhere. Why? Because he revealed to us what? Y'all kept saying that the sidewalk ended at Malachi. And we jumped off. We jumped over you, and we're all now hanging around with him. And he'll be back in like a week. Our Savior is back, and there's going to be trouble. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. The Pharisees better run out on the duck. <laughs> but they weren't ready, were they? Because everything they knew about him, they thought, these guys thought the world ended at Malachi. They thought the world ended at John. <laughs> But it is not that the person of Christ 
revealed the truth about the Father. It's that the person of Christ is revealing the truth about the Father. He's not even here anymore, but he's still showing us. He says, I have things to reveal to you about the Father that if I actually told you one temple, one God, one law, one blood, one mind, you would, you would crack up. So James and the giant church, they, they, in Jerusalem, they were just convinced we know everything there is to know. You guys stopped at Malachi. We don't stop at Malachi. We believe Jesus of Nazareth. And that goes on. But he doesn't come in a month. <laughs> he, he doesn't come in a week, a, a year. He doesn't come in five years. And then some Pharisees decide, we need to talk. Because these little people leave in Malachi. We killed their leader, not enough. We put them in jail, not enough. We beat them, not enough. And a Pharisee named Gamaliel which is not the guy from the Smurfs, that's Gargamel. <laughs> <clears throat> but a Pharisee named Gamaliel says, look, man, let's just live and let live. It's going to fizzle out. If Jesus was talking crazy, it's going to go away. If he was talking truth, you really want to get into it? What if he was right? And they decide to leave it alone for about three years. But there was a small group of the Pharisees that didn't believe in live and let live. They believed in... Uh, solving disputes by other means. And a man named Saul of Tarsus decides, we've been patient long enough. Let's do it. And they go and find the priest like to get a fatwa, right? Like they did with Salman Rushdie. You get the imams to say, you can, we sanction the killing of this man. And Saul gets a letter. We sanction the killing of the followers of Christ. And here it goes. Stephen first man down. Kill. And when he does that, all the Christians start running. And Saul goes back and says, where's my jurisdiction? Is it just Jerusalem? They said, how far do you need it to be? He said, I want to go everywhere. These liars are perverting our idea of God. And wherever I find them, I need permission to kill them. And they signed it. And here he comes to a town near you. It says, dragging men and women snatching them out of the synagogues, tormenting them, putting a knife to their head like they did on that beach in Egypt just a couple years ago, telling their families, deny this, deny this. Say Jesus is a deceiver. Do you want to see your mother again? Deny it, deny it. They say, we can't, we can't. He is the truth. He shows us the Father. Fire. And Peter and James are like, this is, we might want to go back. We might want to go back. Maybe we're wrong. We want to go back. And James is like, stay. And Peter's like, just stay. Everybody just stay. And then Peter got hungry, and on top of a rooftop, Jesus says, hey, bud, <clears throat> check that out. And down come all these crab legs, <laughs> scrimps, right? They all come down. Some ribs and some light bread and some coleslaw that comes down. And a voice he recognizes says to him, get up, Peter. Break the law of Moses. <laughs> and Peter says, nah, you're tricking me. I, nah, I've been fooled so many times about who do you say that I am. I'm not falling for that. Ha, ha, ha. Very funny. I, no, no unclean food has ever come out into this mouth. And, and not only that, you telling me to do something? Look, you got me out here crazy. I'm out here, I got no ground. There's no scripture I'm even standing on. I, I've gone past Malachi, I'm just standing with you. And, and I never even saw you eat anything that wasn't in line with the scriptures. And whatever this voice is, the alarm clock, I bind you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. And Jesus kept telling him, eat it. And then there's a knock at the door. And Peter says, who is that? And they say, some Gentiles. And they want you to come to their house and break bread with them. What? And the voice says, go. But what about the scripture? Go. But you didn't say that in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Go. And with trepidation, he goes and he stops at the door. And he says, you know it's against the law of Moses for me to come in this house. But, but what I just heard on a rooftop tells me that 
with no authority other than what God has just spoken. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to s- s- step into it, and power confirms. But there's a problem. He's got to go back to James and explain that he has no scriptural basis and no Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John basis. And James says, we heard that you went in with men who were unclean. And he says, I know, but Jesus just told me we have a false idea about people. We think the Jews are the only one who belong to God. And the same voice that talked to me on that beach when he told me to leave my nets just told me, that's a wrong idea. Mm. Based on what? And they go in the scripture and they find, well, what about this? I guess that backs it up, but what about that? Yeah, but what about this? Uh, yeah, okay, that's true, but what about an everlasting cup? Yeah, I know, but what about this? And they argue the scriptures. And then they have to say, we, 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 the scriptures don't give us a clear answer. But if we're asking ourselves, based on what we know of God, based on what we feel about Christ, do we feel that Christ honestly cares less about people who are not Jewish than he does about Jews? Does Christ really look at the bombings in the Middle East and go, well, at least it wasn't Jewish people that died, so I guess I'm not as sad. Do we really believe that about him? No, we don't believe that about him. Then guess what we're going to do? Even though we have no sidewalk, even though we have no visual example, we are going to allow God to be revealed through the person of Christ and step deeper into an idea than we've ever known before. And Peter's like, huh, I'm on the front edge. I'm on the lead edge. I'm a revelator. But then the man of the Scripture, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, a Pharisee of the Pharisees, blameless touch as concerning the law. Anytime I broke it, I knew exactly what animal to light on fire to make sure it was fixed. And I am a man has circumcised the eighth day, the man of the written word. One day, on his way to Damascus, comes face to face with the living word. And at first he thinks he understands it. And it says he went immediately into Damascus and says, everything we thought was going to happen for Israel has happened. Everything we thought was going to happen for Israel has happened. Everything we thought was going to happen for Israel has happened. The Christ is here. The Christ is here. The Christ is here. He thought he understood because all he knew was the written word. I was so wrong. He is the Christ. This is where he sets up Israel. This is where he puts the Jews above everybody. This is where he builds the temple. This is where it's, it's happened. But he missed one little part. Because Jesus said, I'm going to have you go tell everybody what I'm showing you now. And you're going to tell everybody what I'm going to show you in the future. And he comes back, and Peter and them are like, whoa, 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 And Paul goes away. (laughs) Three years. By the time he comes back, he's even loonier than he was before. (laughs) Why? Because the living word didn't just ask him to rethink his opinion of Jesus. It asked him to rethink everything he knew about God. He said, yeah, I've been really thinking um, based on the living word and who Christ is and da-da-da. I don't really think like we have a God and there's all these other gods. There's really only one God and the Gentiles have him too. (gasps) Yeah, I've been thinking like there's not like our law and we're the only ones that have it. Nobody else has it. We got a lot of stuff. But really, if you think about the only law, loving each other as you love yourself, I'm convinced that law is on everybody's heart. (gasps) I've been thinking our whole thing is you got to be circumcised or you're not part of the deal. But I've met a lot of uncircumcised people that seem to know God just as much as we do. And I'm really thinking now circumcision really isn't a thing. (gasps) I've been thinking, Romans 14, 14, based on what Jesus is showing me, I don't think there's anything that's ever been unclean. I mean, I know I always believed that. I was raised that. I killed people for not doing that. But now I think, I thought I was killing those people because I was doing it in the name of God. Now I just realized I just killed people for no reason because God didn't really care about what you eat. <gasps> you know, I've been thinking, maybe there's not Jews or Greeks or, or male or female or slave class or, or maybe there's not, maybe there's just people. Maybe that God relates to all people and that the way I thought about God, that he was always for our nation and against everybody else's nation, I go out and see those nations and, and they know God just like we do. So I'm really thinking maybe that, <gasps> and Peter was almost in until the people came from James 
And Peter said, I, uh, uh, yeah, Paul, I can't rock with you. And Barnabas almost was in until the people came to James. And Barnabas, I don't really, I can't, I don't know. I mean, I, really, I, I don't really. Uh. And, and James said, you know what? James started going to all Paul's churches and said, we love him. But he's too far off the edge. Look, we, we went past Genesis to Malachi. I get it. We understand. We were the first ones to break it. This dude is way out here talking about that God's not on the Jews' side. He's on everybody's side. That it's not one nation above another. That, that God really never said women were less than men. I'm thinking a whole different thing. This guy's going way out. And so what they do is they go to Paul's churches, and they get Paul's churches to refuse to let him come back. And in 2 Corinthians, they ask him, look, you can come back here, just bring a letter from James. A letter from James? Just get James to say it's okay for you to come back. Paul says, you are my letter. I mean, I did miracles among you. I did, I mean, you need a letter that proves God is with me? You are the letter. They said, look, we don't want to be in the middle of it. Sort it out with James. (laughs) Last line. The problem is, Revelation trajectory revelation, not just crazy revelation, but revelation that follows the trajectory from the law to the prophets, from the prophets to the gospels, from the gospels to... Revelation that's consistent with where the arrow is shooting. It flows easier in an individual than it does an institution. When Pastor Dollar got a hold of the person of grace, it didn't flow easily through him. He challenged it. He doubted it. But what about, and this verse, and that verse, and this verse, and this verse. He said, I know the verses, but you've been seeing them from the wrong angle. Yeah, but God. Yeah, but God. And then he told Pastor Tabby, I'm telling you this. She said, but what about? But what about? Are you saying, but what about? And it's, it, 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 when Peter saw it, he doubted. Are you really telling me? It doesn't, it doesn't flow easily through individuals. It just flows more easily. So what took seven months, nine months, ten months to wash all the way on the shore of Pastor Dollar, now he has to come and tell it to the institution. And it took a lot longer to get it through the institution. The Catholic Church just now is agreeing with some of the things Martin Luther wrote 500 years ago. They're like, okay, I guess maybe people really don't. How how long does it take a revelation to work through an institution? Consider Pastor Taffy. I know what Genesis to Malachi says about women. I know what <laughs> Matthew, Mark, I know what, I mean, I know what uh, Timothy, I, I mean, I know what Corinthians says about women. I know what I've been given as religious knowledge, but there's something in my knower that when I hold it up to the book, I say, yeah, I guess, but when I hold it up to Christ, I go, eh. <laughs> because here's what we're able to admit. We're able to admit that when Malachi ended, there was something else. We're able to admit that when Jesus died and ascended, there was something else. We're able to admit that after Peter, there was something else. What we're not able to admit is that Paul didn't know it all. Yes. Oh my God, you just sinned. Paul himself said, my teaching is partial, fragmentary knowledge. Because what's happened with Christ is not a change of the degree of our religion. It's a totally different type of religion. Mary had a baby. It was a little lamb. But Mary, according to Moses, was instantly unclean the day she had a baby. Thank God she had a baby boy, because Moses said when you have a baby boy, you got to sit out of the game for three weeks. Had she had a baby girl like her mama, she would have had to sit out of the game for like three months. Why? Because you know having a little girl makes you doubly unclean. Why? Because an unclean thing brought an unclean thing in the world. That's unclean squared. (laughs) That's what the book says. And Mary believed this, and Joseph believed this, and she didn't think she was being beaten down. She thought that's what God wanted. And so what she did was, she went to the temple, and she did what it says over in Leviticus. It says, go get a turtle dove. If you're poor, that's all you can afford, get a turtle dove. And because you're unclean, because you're a woman, because you're unclean, because you had a baby, because you're unclean, because it was a boy baby, thank God, not a girl baby, because, man, that could have been really expensive, take this turtle dove and offer it, and now God is no longer looking at your uncleanness, you woman, you. And I'm not denying that's what they thought of God. They also thought God was going to call down. They had a lot of misconceptions about God. But we think that because of the blood of Jesus, God sees a woman every time she's on her cycle and says, well, she's dirty. 
and she shouldn't be at church. But because I'm going to stare at her through the blood of Jesus, I just will ignore her dirtiness. But Jesus has not changed our thoughts by degree. It's not that women who just by being women are no longer dirty. Christ lets us know they never were. Amen. How do you know that? Because his blood hadn't even been shed and a little dirty woman touched him. He said, oh, sweetheart, what's going on with you? <laughs> guys, guys, that's your shadowed idea of how God views a woman. I'm not coming to deal in shadows. I'm coming to show you how God really feels. But do you know the courage it takes to get to the edge of the sidewalk and say, I see what they knew. Do you know the courage it took her to say, I know all the scriptures, but I'm not going back and forth. with you. All I'm asking is, look inside if it was your daughter. Why? Because what you know deep down is much more reliable than what you've been conditioned from the feeling after. Look, the Bible says, Paul said, there's no such thing as a slave. Somebody else came along and tweaked that a little bit and said, well, I mean, you can have slaves, just be Christian about it. But if we're going to debate the scriptures, do we really need to debate the scriptures? If we want to debate, well, it doesn't say you can't have slaves. Is that, are we debating the scriptures or are we going to go with what we know to be true about the person? I'm not going to debate a scripture with you. Slavery's okay as long as you're saved about it. I rebuke that in the name. Well, Paul said, I don't know if Paul said it. I don't know if Paul wrote it. I don't know if the Catholic Church wrote it. It don't matter to me. If you're going to push the written word at me, you better come at it with the living word. Because if you're asking me what it says, that's one thing. But if you're asking me who Jesus has shown the Father has, there's no way he would ever tell anybody. Yeah, you can slay people. Just be it in the fruit of the Spirit. But you know what? I've never heard that before in my life. But you already know it's true. Thank you so much. God bless you all.